Welcome to the press center at the game between Fabiano Caruana and uh, Hikaru Nakamura. Two American players has just finished in a draw. Uh, despite the, the result, which we may say is a bit boring, it's a draw. Um, the game was really spectacular. Actually, we enjoyed it a lot here. Um, and um, I would really love you to take me through this game a little bit, through its um, main moments. So first of all, this E5 move. It looks like it was a bit of a surprise for you, Karan, uh, for the Anno. I, I know the move exists, but uh, can't say I've checked it very recently. Uh, and it's supposed to be dubious, but uh, I think with modern engines you can make everything sort of work, especially if your, your opponent doesn't know too well. So I think I played in a very critical way. Um, of course, it's bishop b5. I mean, like also knight f5 is, is definitely a move, but bishop b5 should be very critical. And, mm -hmm. and after a, a6, I thought bishop a4 is also um, very critical, of course. Can also move by bishop to other places. I thought if, like, bishop c4, unfortunately, um, after a6. So, yeah, which moment? Like here, here, yeah, bishop I, I c4? Thought bishop c4, knight okay. b6, I didn't see how to play for an advantage. Uh, knight is weird on b6, but, I mean, I don't know if any of what I'm saying is correct, but this is what I was at least calculating. And that's why I went for bishop a4. Mm -hmm. And Hikaru, how, how did it go for you? Like, you, you obviously prepared this at home, and um, did it work uh, as, you, as you wanted it to? Yeah, I mean, uh, as Fabiano said, and he's right, you can pretty much make anything work. I mean, I remember many, many years ago, this is probably 1998 or 1999, um, I actually had this training session with the Grand Master Walter Brown, the late Grand Master from the US, who probably outside of like Russia and the Soviet Union was the most prominent knight or player. And I remember when I worked with him, he, he asked me like, you know, why do you play A6 um, instead of playing E5 right away? And of course it's because of Bishop B5, but uh, in this modern world, I mean, pretty much anything is playable, especially if your opponent isn't um, super ready for it, I would say. So I got what I wanted out of the opening, but of course it always is a little bit more pleasant for white, but I figured I'm gonna be up a lot of time on the clock um, in general. Um, and after that, uh, what would you say was the critical moment of the game? Because it seems like it was going uh, kind of slow, but then suddenly, you know, some complications started. Um, well, I mean, the first question is whether I should play e4 or castles. This, of course, is the first big question um, in the game after take six castles, whether I should castle or play e4. I mean, this is the obvious um, uh, first big question. But then after queen d5, um, like castles, yeah, after e4, you, take you six castles. E4, yes. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. so after this whole line, rookie one castles, rookie four, um, takes rook, rook b1, bishop f6, queen d5. I mean, I wasn't sure if rook c8 is best or rook b8 is best. I, I sort of wasn't really, uh, this. I, let me just put it this way. I don't think the way Fabiano played was the most critical. Um, the, the whole line's very critical, but I, this wasn't the absolute main line, per se, uh, that I'd looked at. And so I wasn't sure whether rook c8 or rook b8 or whether I should move the queen. Uh, I wasn't 100% sure. I, I think the computer actually says pretty much every move is a draw if you play it perfectly. But um, yeah, I played rook c8 and then I was kind of caught off guard by queen b7. Um, because up to this point I hadn't used a whole lot of time. I was expecting either rook d1 or rook e1. Uh, putting the rook on one of the two squares. I wasn't sure which one was, was better. But yeah, after queen b7, I spent a lot of time on, on rook c5. Um, I mean, the, the, the problem is also, I've, I've looked at a lot of these different end games and I wasn't sure which one I want. So for example, here I could also play, I think, d5, which is a move. And then I guess white goes rook e2, and then I can play queen d6 or something. And like queen d6, rook d1, rook c7, I mean, queen d5 takes, and I, I wasn't sure, because there were lines I'd looked at where you get a5, a4, and it's a pretty easy draw, but here the pawn's on a6, and... So you take with... Maybe rook c5 instead of rook c7 is a bit more accurate. I, I thought I was sort of expecting this. Ah, rook c5, yeah. Because bishop d5, rook c7 doesn't work, I think. No, 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 then you have bishop f7, right? Um, rook, rook 8, f7. Queen a8? Oh, wait, no, no, no rook, rook 8, f7. Yeah. Okay, let's try to show it. At uh, least I thought this was maybe. I ah, no, you're right. This is the one where you're right. This is the one where it doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. It's the so I don't know. Maybe I have this, rook e eight. No, right. I have rook e eight after rook f seven. So rook c seven here. Yeah, bishop d five. Okay, wait. Uh, no, rook c five, bishop d five. Rook c five, bishop d five. Yeah. Rook c seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I saw so you have bishop f seven. It yeah. does work. Yeah, yeah. With rook e eight. Yeah, rook eight f seven. Rook eight f seven and and rook e eight is important. Yeah. And now this. Okay. And why wins? Yeah. Okay. That's a pretty yeah, but again, I couldn't figure line. out what, what the right choice was, and then finally I'm like, okay, I don't want to play this end game, and I thought this rook c5, rook f5 with d5 was okay, um, but I don't know, because the whole reason I played it was with a different idea in mind. Um, 
And this position after, uh, yeah, this all fours? Yeah. Yeah, sorry. No, no worries. Jumped here, okay. Uh, main line, main line with rook c5. I mean, it's all forced okay. basically. Takes, takes, rook d1, d5, I mean, all very forced. Well, after rook b4, bishop c3. I thought queen e7 was a Yeah, curve. I mean, but that's the thing. When I spent all this time, I was going to go queen e7, and then I, I couldn't figure it out. I thought queen e7, queen b5, bishop c3, rook yep. a4, bishop well, b1, Well, I also have queen d, queen d3 is also very critical. I mean, I wasn't sure. e1. And f4, and I couldn't nice. figure it out. F3, I think I'm okay because I have queen e3, rook h5. But after f4, I, I, I couldn't figure it out. And then I'm like, okay, I'm just going to go for this rook sack because it should be fun. And um, why not? I mean, I wasn't sure if I would play rook a4 after uh, bishop c3 or queen, ah, d3. queen d3. Queen d3 yeah. maybe is very strong, but there's rook f2, queen c3, queen e2, and it leads to an endgame, which is probably a draw. Bishop d5, queen d1, king f2, queen d5, I guess it's a draw. Uh, and. Actually, it's, it's very, there's a beautiful line. Instead of uh, bishop d5, there's rook h4. I think that, uh, like, rook h4, rook g2, king h1. Oh, here, rook h4. Yeah, and I think only rook g4 wins for black. But I don't know if it's very important, like rook g2, king here, h1. Here. Ah, rook g4, nice. I don't know if other moves no, are No, wait, rook g4 you take. Rook no, you take. No, you just take. You have rook g1. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I win. Wait, so maybe this yeah, so, works yeah, so for just white? Yeah, so just this, this, and rook g1, right? So, yeah, 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 this wins for white. So maybe this is good after king h1? In that case, queen d3 is very strong if this works. Oops. Yeah. G5. So this line, um, it is critical for, for queen d3, basically, right? So... But white plays without risk, yeah. which, which was nice, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. in the worst case, I can... I mean, I have a drawn in like a million ways, so... Um, I don't really risk anything, and black could get down a pawn and then suffer a very long time, or just lose. If, if yeah, you lose the also. b4 pawn cleanly, then you can just lose. So, uh, yeah, rook f2 came as a surprise, because I thought rook bd5 would be, like, really strong, but, um, but maybe it's a, a good defense. So I mean, when, when players of your level, you calculate all this, you know, for, for us, mere mortals, it looks like a total mess with a lot of different lines, you know, to, to consider with a lot of variations. Do you ever actually lose control of all of that? Or you, you're like always absolutely 100% sure what is happening in each line until the very end? <laughs> not, not at all sure. <laughs> no, but I mean, this game, it's, I think, objectively much easier for white to play. Because if I play one wrong move, I just lose the game. And white generally mm -hmm. has almost no risk, which is also why I went for this rook f2. Because I thought it get, at least it gets messy, and in the end games are chances. Because if I don't play, play as bishop c3 rook f2, I, I thought it was just probably very bad. But again, I was intending to play queen e7, and I, I didn't like what I saw, and I just changed my mind. But of course, I had spent 30 minutes mm -hmm. uh, looking at this whole line to play queen e7, and then I changed my mind. Um, so yeah, definitely, I, I don't think it was in control at all for either of us. So sometimes it's actually a decision just from a, from a practical standpoint, let's say, that you know that this is, you have to do something messy now. Yeah, but actually I, I miss queen d, I mean the problem is I also miss queen d3, because I thought after rook d5, queen h4, I, I was, uh, the move that I had spent, that, that I was expecting was queen d6, because, um, because if rook f6, there's a very beautiful checkmate with the queen sack. But, but rook e2 is but just rook e2, yeah. Exactly. So yeah, I mean, there's this. And then as soon as I play, I realize there's queen d3, and I was just very unhappy again. Um, I, knew, I mean, I knew I had rook f6 to at least keep the game going, but it, it felt very shaky around here. Mm -hmm. um, like g3, I thought was good. Queen b4, king g2, yeah. king g2 I thought was I, very I wasn't good. sure after queen b4. I mean, it's, it, this is a position where I thought maybe I have something quite strong. King g2 was kind of a natural move, but I also, I think it were, I was down to maybe 12 minutes, so it was difficult to, to really get to the heart of the position. Like if I trade queens, then I'm, I'm probably have very good winning chances. But how do I trade queens is, is another question. Um, so, so yeah, king g2 and maybe after bishop b2 it was critical. I mean, we were discussing rook b1 as, as perhaps a better try than what I did. Mm -hmm. uh, rook f5 was a bit lazy because I was getting low on time and I thought it's a safe advantage, but mm -hmm. it might also not be a big advantage. And by lazy, you mean that you, you didn't want really to calculate like a, a lot of lines, you just wanted to spare, save some time, right? Or? Well, there's no increment. So it's, uh, you know, if you really get too low on time, then any position can, can start to get risky. Mm -hmm. uh, and there, it is still a very sharp position. After rook f5, I, I have absolutely no risk because there's no longer an active rook on f6. But maybe rook b1 is very strong, I, I'm not sure. After rook b1... Um, Here rook b1. Yeah. Like, 
Yeah, because the point is I move the bishop, rook h5 wins the game. Yeah, bishop uh, a3, rook yeah. h5. Yeah, I'll say doesn't matter. here, one, rook and then h5. here, and then this, and this. Yeah, yeah g6, bishop f7, right. game over, yeah. Okay. So probably queen a3, or? Yeah, I think queen a3, but it, but again, it's, <laughs> this bishop doesn't look right, like, still, even rook d7. And then rook f1, I mean, should be, it but feels very have, good for white. Do you have queen c5? Ah, queen, queen c5 here? But, but, but even this one with rook f1 now, I, I don't get the setup, I think. Um, like rook f1 here. This, I mean, maybe a computer will still say this, but I just think if I don't get g6, king g7, this, this should also be highly unpleasant. Just fills. So rook takes f1. King f1. King f1, yeah. Yeah, the rook on d7 is very strong. Yeah. I mean, this might be winning for it. Yeah, because in the game, you don't get the, you get the queen on f3, but you don't get the rook to d You don't get the active rook, and then it's much harder. I felt like I had a huge advantage, but I, I just, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe this was a, a very inaccurate move. And after bishop f6, I don't know. I, I should still be able to press this like very, very seriously. Um, but how I do it is, is another question. So from this standpoint, you said that you didn't want to play risky. And you also was low on time and there is no increment. So does the time control really influence your decisions? Like it means that you, you, if you had increment, for example, would it be different? I would probably spend a bit more time. I mean, mm -hmm. I wouldn't worry about getting down to, to one minute or two seconds because uh, I, can't, I can't flag and the position will be safe if I always have 30 seconds. So I, I probably wouldn't worry too much about getting down to, to my final minute with like 10, okay, we still have 10 moves to go and you don't want to be trying to, <laughs> trying not to flag. Yeah. So I, I don't know, it's, it's of course, it's just a different dynamic because let's say we start with less time at the beginning of the game, but um, like in the women's candidates, but we have an increment, um, then maybe you use your time differently at the start. So it's, it's, it's always difficult to make these decisions throughout the game. I mean, from the very beginning, you have to decide how to use your time and you don't know what will happen later in the game. And in general, which time control do you prefer? Uh, increment, no increment? Probably increment, but I don't care too much. Hmm. And for you, Hikaru? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I mean, I think no increment is better for me, but I, I actually also prefer playing with increment just because it seems like almost every turn we play and has increment for move one, and then the dynamic with no increment is very, very different. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just, it's very different. You got to, a position like Fabiano has, and he's, he's correct. He could have got, he could have spent nine minutes on a single move, had a minute, and he would have been fine with the 30 seconds, but with no increment, uh, if you get too long time, it's, it gets very, very tricky to play. And we're, we're so used to having increment that we're not used to these situations without it. Mm -hmm. I see. I still feel like I could have pressed this. I don't know, like after, um, maybe after a4, king g7, I, I should just like throw in h4 earlier because it, it takes away all these like perpetual checks with queen d2, queen h6. It gives my king a much, like, much safer square on h3 to hide. Yeah, but h4, rook d8? So uh, yeah, I wasn't sure if you would try to trade rooks as well, but I can now play a5. Um, right here, okay. Yeah, trade trade the rooks. Yeah. And queen, queen, queen d1, and... Uh, I thought, I mean, I thought even here if I get something like... I, I guess I can't go queen c5 right here, but even something like queen a7 and bishop d4, and I wasn't 100% sure how white's supposed to to win this. Like queen, queen d5, bishop d4, of course white has a great chance to win, but yeah, I wasn't a6. really sure. But it's it's really unpleasant. Yeah, I mean, like at least six and just sit and wait, something like this. Yeah, no, I, would, I mean, I, I would have taken course, this yeah. very happily. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can also maybe play h5. Like I can play on two two flanks, and uh, and black has no active counterplay, so it's it's a free roll. Uh, but yeah, the way I played it was very harmless. Yeah, after rook eight, I think it's already very close to a very close to a draw. I mean, I can Not still anymore. after like queen c7. Uh, no, no, the move before after queen d8. I can still throw an h4 here. Yeah, I mean, it's at least like the smart decision, because at least make. Uh... But it's the same thing, right? I just take, take, take. No, but take, take, take ah, rook b7. Rook b7. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Good point. Yeah, Which is a whole true. other story. Yeah. No, no, that's true. Yeah. I mean, like I can play h4, and then uh, mm -hmm. Black will have to think about what to do. Which it's probably a draw, but it's maybe more practical chances. After queen c7, I don't have a way to play anymore, so <laughs> there's no way to save my pawn. Okay, um, so just uh, to some emotional questions. How do you feel here in uh, Toronto? 
Yeah, I mean, it's, it's nice playing here again. Uh, as always, it's way too cold, but that's just part of, part of playing chess tournaments, I guess you could say. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it's, it's nice to see the fans. It's a place I'm familiar with, and uh, yeah, so far so good. And what about uh, you, Fabiano? How do you feel? Yeah, I'm happy to play. It's been a lot of waiting for the Kansas to start, a lot of preparation, so it's, it's good to finally get the games going. And um, I mean, already the first round has a lot of fighting games, uh, very sharp ones. I don't know what's happening between Ali Reza and, and Prague. Uh, it's very. They just. Oh, they, they drew, yeah? It okay. Well, yeah. But it was a wild game. I wasn't sure mm -hmm. what the evaluation was. So, yeah. Somehow four draws, but they, they were uh, a lot of very, very sharp positions today. Yeah, absolutely. Um, do we have questions from, uh, from our journalists? Sagar, please speak in the microphone. Mm -hmm. My question is to Hikaru. Uh, you defended really well uh, today, and you do this over and over again. What do you think makes you such a strong defender? Um, well, I mean, I think it's sort of, <laughs> I'm used to playing a lot of bad positions, and in general, uh, I think my op opening preparation is probably not as good as some of the other players, so I'm pretty comfortable just playing worse positions. And I mean, I think it's, it's funny too, because when I was doing my uh, training camp for this event, uh, obviously I'd looked at this E5 line, and one of the German GMs who was helping me was very, very unhappy. He's like, why are you playing this stuff? You're just going to get a worse position and lose. Um, so, yeah, to each their own, but I mean, I, I, I don't mind defending, and uh, I, I think I'm just used to it. So you get, you get used to it, and you, you tend to defend uh, as well as you can. Any more questions? Yes, please. Can you? Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you to both players. Um, how are the conditions in the, in the hall? Do you have any disturbances by the people on the balcony? Is it uh, different to play with these people? Well, I mean, uh, for me, I, I don't mind. It's, it's completely fine. Um, but you know, I think there are certain things that were discussed in the meeting yesterday of, for, between the players and the officials that were, were actually important, like no team members being allowed um, watching the games. But overall, I mean, it's completely fine for me. And what about you, Fabiano? I think it's not great, to be honest. Uh, the, the room is rather small. Uh, it's not a big deal, but uh, it would be nicer to have more space to, to walk around, especially at the start of the game where, when there are photographers. And um, I'm not a fan of having live audience for this tournament in general. Like, I think in 2018 in Berlin, we did have some real issues with the live audience. I mean, today there wasn't anything. Uh, and it's not like I don't want people to see the games, but in, in 2018, for example, um, a game I played with, with Levon in the seventh round, uh, someone started to, to take you know, photos or, or like record the game or something with their phone, which was very disturbing to, to Levon. Um, and uh, look, thankfully there are, there are no like no phones allowed here, devices, yeah, no electronic yeah, devices, absolutely. so it's much better, but still you can't ensure that uh, there won't be like some disturbance in a very critical moment. For most events, we, you don't care too much, you know, but, uh, but the stakes are so high here that uh, I would prefer if there were uh, no live spectators. Uh, can I ask a qu second question? Yes, please. Uh, to uh, Hikaru, um, you said you worked together with a German uh, grandmaster. Can you reveal who it was? I mean, everybody knows who it is. I don't have to say his name. Everyone knows. It's not a secret. Everyone knows I'm, I'm German. I don't know. Not Fushinbath, of course. <laughs> Do we have more questions? Uh, Anna, please the microphone here. Oh, yeah. So would you consider this game uh, a good start of the tournament, both of you? Well, I mean, any time you draw the first game with black, that's always good, um, considering how much time everyone has spent preparing for, for the event. So it's as good as it can be. But obviously, in such a long tournament, I, I think generally it comes down to the last few rounds. So not, not that big of a deal. But sure, it's, it's better than losing like I did last time to Fabiano. Yeah, it's uh, the most neutral uh, result uh, overall you could have in the first round. Uh, usually, you have more decisive results in the first round. like but. Okay, it's uh, nothing really special happened. Um, probably I have a little bit to regret in terms of some missed chances in this game, but uh, as Hikaru mentioned, it's such a long event that the first round rarely um, has huge significance, and it's very often that comes down to the last few rounds or the second half uh, uh, when 
players start to get tired and start to make more mistakes. Thank you. Um, thank you for your questions. Do we have more? And then I think with that we can uh, let our players rest. And um, thank you very much for, for being here with us.